there is a delicate balance between the fundamental forces of the Terraria universe. The power of the Moon Lord balances the profaned rage of Providence, the Sun Goddess. When the Moon Lord was defeated, the balance was disrupted. The power of Providence was now fully unleashed. She sent her profaned minions to terrorize the land. Magnus could feel the Goddess's strength and rage growing every day. Magnus had to take action immediately, otherwise, Providence would consume the world in profaned flame. Welcome back. This is Rito here with another Magnus the Mage episode. We are doing a Calamity Death Mode playthrough using the Mage class. Last episode, we defeated the Moon Lord and the Dragon Folly or Bumble Burb. And this episode, we've got tons of new weapons. This one actually we got from the Dragon Folly. And we are ready to fight Providence. So first we need to fight the Profaned Guardians, and then we'll be able to start up the Providence fight. One thing I want to do for the Providence fight is actually take these little candles that we had purchased for when we worked on the No-Hit Calamitous. And we can put these down in the underworld because I built a huge arena in the underworld with a spawn point and everything. So that will be where we fight Providence for the first time since it's just so much easier to stay in the biome. We've farmed up a bunch of Unholy Essence and we can, well, first of all, we can craft some Profane Shards. We can craft Supreme Healing Potions. The Supreme Healing Potions will be pretty helpful because it adds an extra 50 life per healing. So let's craft a whole bunch of these. Um, I may just craft most of our potions into these. Now we have 104. But one thing I've never actually tried doing is fighting the profaned guardians in the underworld. So I built a huge arena and this arena I built with obsidian platforms so lava doesn't break them like that. I have a little spawn house that I built right here and it's a uh, suitable housing so it can set my spawn point. And this means when we die, because I'm sure we will on Providence, we will be able to just immediately spawn down here. So I've got it on auto pause, and you can see I've got the Seraph Tracers, the Ambrosial Accessory for Health Regen, I've got the Asgard's Valor, Heart of the Elements, the Absorber, Deific Amulet, and the Sigil of Calamitous. And I think all of these should make me pretty powerful for this fight, and then we've got the Nebula Armor. I think our arena is pretty well situated for this boss fight. Let's switch this to day, and let's start up the Profane Guardians. This should be pretty simple, especially with an arena like this. Throw on some Rage. This is a pretty good spell for this fight since they stay so close. there. There we go. We got the profane core and we can craft the profane core into an unlimited one with 50 unholy essence. Interesting, there's a relic of convergence. It says creates a profaned crystal that charges power. Hold out the crystal. Holding out the crystal slows down the player. At the end of its life, the crystal heals the player. So it's like some special healing item. And we have just enough unholy essence to craft a unlimited profaned core, which I highly recommend anyone do because this will not consume it, which means we can fight Providence as many times as we need to in order to defeat it without having to re-farm up items. 
I think it is time to get started with our Providence fights. And this is going to be a pretty tricky boss fight, I think. Uh, yeah, let's just see how this goes. Let's try using the thing we got from Dragon Folly. Oh my gosh. We took so much damage there. Just from the first little wave. We're going to need to get really good at dodging. gosh this is gonna be so hard Well, we got to 57% on our first try, and I'm not sure if we were using the best item for the fight, because we were using this Rogue Slash. So let's try using our Bubble Gun and see how this goes. Let's uh, summon this boss again. Okay, we're gonna need to use Discord a lot and try to keep our mobility going well. It's kind of hard to see what we need to be dodging with this. This is me narrating after the fact because I was pretty quiet during some of these boss fight attempts since it is quite difficult and I was very focused. And I figured this would be a good time to discuss the Discord server that a lot of people have been requesting. I'm actually not that familiar with Discord and I had mentioned that in one of the comments and one of the viewers who has been watching the channel since the beginning actually reached out to me and mentioned that they had created a Discord server for Rito Gaming. So I really appreciate the help from the very generic username for creating the server and here is the invite link to anybody who'd like to join and check it out. I also have the link in the description of the video. Like I said, I'm not very familiar with how all this Discord stuff works, but I will try to jump in and learn as we go. So I hope you all have a good time with the Discord channel, and I will go back to the normal in-game commentary. That phase really messed us up. We have 31 seconds until a heal. Oh man, 40%. So this time I want to try using the elemental ray and just see how it goes. Okay, here we go. So the elemental ray seems to be doing pretty good. Ooh. 
Ooh, taking too many hits. Seems like we're doing about 10,000 damage. When we can land some hits, we, yeah, we do about 10,000 damage fairly consistently. I think I'm going to go back to the bubble gun method. Seemed to be working pretty well. Okay, we're doing pretty well here. We got Providence. Oh my gosh, we did it. Whew, we did it. I cannot believe it. That feels amazing. That's such a hard boss fight. And let's... See, we can't get in. I guess we can discord in. I can't believe the bubble gun was what ended up kind of working out the best for us. And yeah, that probably was like five or six attempts maybe. I'm not 100% sure, but it wasn't like a crazy amount of attempts. The fight got a lot more approachable as I got the hang of it. And let's see what we got from our treasure bag. We have the blazing core. Interesting, that does 10% damage reduction, and it creates miniature sun that lingers and deals damage to enemies when you get hit. And we got a summon, 
we got the divine geodes that's kind of the most important part and we got the elysian aegis which is also extremely important and then we have the providence lore which says placing your inventory to imbue all projectiles with profaned flame causing them to inflict extra damage however your max life is decreased due to part of your soul being required to fuel the profaned flames interesting <laughs> all these projectiles have profaned flame now although i don't like losing max health, so I'm going to put that away. So now that we've beat the boss, I want to buy two more treasure bags. Ooh, <laughs> our next magic weapon, which is this right here. And then we also have some summons, some ranged. We got more blazing cores. And then mainly, I just wanted to get more divine geodes. Let's see what we can craft with our divine geodes. So we can craft the Tarragon armor, eventually the Dark Spark, which is the upgrade to the Last Prism. That's going to be pretty sweet. Ooh, we can do the Undyne's Retribution upgrade now that we have access to Eula Bloom. Now we need to go find some Eula Bloom. So let's go take a look and see if we can get any of that. I always forget where these ores spawn. Like, Eula Bloom might actually be a jungle ore. So let's just do a quick check down our main mine shaft. Looks like we weren't finding any Eula Bloom where we were looking, so maybe it's something that spawns in the jungle. The Nuclear Fury is really good for this underground exploration but it doesn't do nearly enough damage for being boss viable, in my opinion. I might just not be using it correctly, but it wasn't doing much damage when I was using it. I think it's like max damage is like three to 5,000 or something. I'm having trouble finding some Eula Bloom. I'm not really finding much, but I guess we'll get it eventually. Oh, here's some two chunks of it over here. Looks like we have 167 Eula Bloom now. So we probably need to pick up just a little bit more, and then we should be good to go. But this is good. We're actually exploring our jungle a little bit more. There we go. Now that we have our Eula Bloom, let's craft a bunch of Eula Bloom bars. To craft the Tarragon armor, we need 15. So let's do the Tarragon breastplate and let's find the magic damage one. And let's grab the Tarragon legs. And while we're at it, let's also get the Blossom pickaxe because that's one of the best pickaxes in the game. And we can get the Tarragon Wings, because they really synergize with using the Tarragon Armor. It adds 15 defense and 2 life regen. It's actually a really powerful wing set, and actually slightly faster than our Seraph Tracers, and it has a lot more flight time. We've got 124 defense right now, and when we put on Tarragon, we go up to 157. And let's see what it does for our damage. Our damage is 99. And then it goes up to, well, it stays at 99, so it doesn't do anything for our damage, but our defense goes up so much. And then if we put on our Tarragon Wings instead of our Tracers, our defense goes up to 172. The armor set bonus says reduces enemy spawn rates, increases heart pickup range, enemies have a chance of dropping extra hearts on death. On every fifth critical strike, you will fire a Leaf Storm. Magic projectiles have a 50% chance to heal you on enemy hits. Amount healed is based on projectile damage. Let's go ahead and craft a few more upgrades. So with the Spell Tome and Eula Bloom, we can craft this right here, the Biofusillade. And oh my gosh, that is so cool. <laughs> it's like the Leaf Machine Gun. I love it. We can upgrade our Undyne's Retribution to the Divine Retribution. So let's do that, and let's see what that does. Ooh, 
So I'm up in the sky because we just bought the Undertaker from the arms dealer, and this is where we've got some of our NPCs that we don't have room for. And the Undertaker, combined with a toxic flask, can actually create a magic plasma rifle, which is kind of interesting. The other thing I noticed while I was up here is that there's actually Exodium clusters, which have spawned all over this planetoid. So we can grab some of those. Okay, so let's craft our Bloom Rod. And it fires six lines at once, and the lines never snap. And then let's craft our Plasma Rifle. Interesting, so this is like a sniper rifle, but that uses magic. One thing I'm curious about is how good this fishing pole is. So I've got it right over here, and let's give it a try at our little fishing pond. Whoa. <laughs> we cast so many lines. This is like the fastest fishing ever. If there's anything we need from fishing, be sure to let me know because now we have the power to fish so effectively here. <laughs> yeah, so much good stuff. We got four wood crates that quickly. Craziness. We got two frog legs already. <laughs> I think that's a great place to end this episode. We've defeated Providence. We've defeated the profaned guardians and we have new weapons so powerful and we are ready to fight sentinels and maybe even the poltergast next episode if you've enjoyed this video and if you've been enjoying the series be sure to like and subscribe so you can catch the next episodes thanks again for watching and i'll see you next time